Okay. C. Lindelof videos evaluate the definite integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus, FTC. Today I want to talk about trigonometric functions, so this is where we are. So we are asked here to evaluate the definite integral from 0 to pi of 1 plus sine x dx. We could do this through the limit process, and it's a really, really long process, but an easier way to do it would just be to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let me write this fundamental theorem of calculus out to you. The fundamental theorem of calculus states that the definite integral, a to b, of f of x dx is the same as the parent function f of x evaluated from a to b. Specifically, the instructions to us are, is that given this piece right here, what we should do is take parent f of b minus parent f of a, and that is a huge shortcut. So hopefully this will make some sense to you. First thing I'm going to do is start to integrate this thing. I'm going to keep in mind that I have got to come back to my lower and upper bounds, but for this second, I'm just going to integrate. So to integrate this, to integrate 1 is x, isn't it? This plus sine is this one. The integration formula for sine of x is opposite cosine x, isn't it? So I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I'm going to say that parent f of x is equal to x minus cosine x. <clears throat> From here, what I want to do for my AP reader is, oh, let me do this, right, is this. I want to evaluate this from a to b, so I want to evaluate this from 0 to pi. So this is, this is my intention here. So what I'm going to say is this. I want x plus, sorry, x minus cosine x evaluated from 0 to pi, right? This is a really important statement to make to your AP reader. From there, I want to t tell my reader what I'm going to do. I'm going to take f of b, but if I give some specifics, I get some credit, or I get some, um, I get some something. And the second value was 0, so of 0. Then I'm going to start to break this out a little bit. So I'm going to get x. b is pi, so I'm going to get pi minus cosine pi, right? Pi minus cosine pi, well, pi minus cosine of pi. So here we are on the unit circle, just to show you where I am. And what's this cosine value here? This cosine value here is negative 1. So cosine of pi, the value here, the cosine of pi, is also is negative 1. So I get this. This is my, this is my f of pi. My f of pi is pi plus 1. Then I'm going to use this negative sign right here. So minus... And then I'm going to evaluate this thing again. We said here that x is 0, so here's x. So 0 minus cosine 0. Well, cosine 0, cosine 0 is 1, isn't it? So is 1. So I to, there's where I had that. I'm going to put this 1 in. So hopefully you can see this. I have, now I have pi plus then check this out. I have to follow this a little bit. Negative times this negative is a positive. So plus 1 is equal to 2 plus pi. The devil is always in the details here. You have to be really meticulous. And those, uh, those of you who know me well know that I'm prone to making these kind of little mistakes where it's not a mistake of understanding. It's a mistake of not being meticulous. And I'm warning you not to be like me in that way, that you need to be very meticulous. But anyway, here's our answer. So how did we solve a trig function. The other question I get back is, do we have to prove this? No, because this, this is from an integration formula. You don't have to prove this. So to get to here is fine. You do want to say to your reader that you, that you intend to evaluate this function from 0 to pi. I would definitely use this terminology here, and I would show my work to some point. Some work is better than none. We all know that too much work, though, means that we don't get stuff done. So try to figure that out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.